Welcome to Authors Revealed. I'm Becky Anderson. One of my favorite children's authors is here. It's Katherine Hannigan, author of the best-selling Ida B., one of my favorite middle grade novels of all time. She's here with her new picture book that she's written and illustrated. It's called Dirt Plus Water Equals Mud, a great book to do those imaginary equations for everything you love in life. Catherine, it's so great to have you back here. We, Thank you. Oh my gosh. I, I, it's so great I miss to be you. back I here. I miss you not seeing you. So you are the okay. beginning and the middle and <laughs> probably the end. <laughs> well, we're not. Whatever we, that will well, be. Well, the end is way. We're, we can't even we'll, see that. Yeah, we can't yeah. even see that yet. Yeah. So I want to go back to 2004. Let's. And with Ida B. And this book. And... It still is for me a forever book. I just want to tell you. It's Thank a book you. that will always be on our shelves, a book that we, we always want to put in readers' hands. But I want to talk about when you first came, because we did some fun things. And my daughter, Hallie, absolutely adored you, and but she adored Ida B. And she kind of reminded me a little bit about of Ida B. She was. She was like Ida but B. But tell us about that. This was your first book, and, and what your experience was when everything first started. So... I had written that book, that story for myself. I didn't even know that there was such a thing as a middle grade novel. I didn't know there were categories. And I, at one point, wasn't sure that I wanted it to be published because it was so personal. Right. It was so precious to me, and I was so afraid yeah. that if I put it out there, it could feel, it could ruin that for me, mm -hmm. that relationship. But it did, be, you know, I was convinced, yeah. and it would be okay. <clears throat> we found a good home for it. I think Haley and you were the first, or one of the first, to respond to that book. And that it was a child, and she yeah. was so bright, but she was so also loving. It wasn't just about some intellectual, it was a heartfelt reaction to that book. Right. And she wanted to write about it. And yeah. tell other people about yeah. it because yeah. she wrote like a review. Yeah, remember? she did. She did. And I yeah. think she was the first, maybe the first one, like the first blur. I think that she changed everything for me. That yeah. made it so much better. Yeah. And then we came out here because it was you. And I had never done anything. I didn't know there was such a thing as touring. <laughs> and we had, uh, we went to all those schools. Yes. Yeah. And we were yeah. in a church once. And yeah. we were. Oh, we had crowds of people. Yeah. And it was just such a great well, reception. We were, you know, when you talked about when 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 Hallie wrote that blurb, yeah. And, and, but when you came, we did that, so many cool things. And I'm going to tell you, Ida B was the first book that we decided we wanted to take this wherever we could take it and get kids to read it in advance of it even coming out. Wow. And and there hadn't. It was a new way for me to think about how we connect with children and educators about a book that we are so passionate about. Wow. But to get your publisher, HarperCollins, to play, and then you play with us when you came. And it was, it was... It was it, a magical it was, time. It was. It, it was really a magical was. time. And that book is, is, has been very magical. And, and I think it proves it that, that this book has been on, I don't know, probably every state's reading list in this country. But, but what it did was... it really made me realize that we can do so much more when we love a book so much with you know yeah. with everything like if we're coming if we love it you yeah. know right and that uh so just to say that was also steve geck was my editor that that's time, right. and he's up for anything isn't he that's, that's right man who's like and he loves Good books play. as well that's right but that story really it was for children. It ended up being for children, but really that was a story to comfort yeah. myself. That was, I was teaching at Iowa State University. I was teaching art and design. I loved my students, but it was this huge bureaucracy, like three meetings a day, hate meetings. 
And that is what I did at night yeah. to like soothe myself, yeah. to make my, and hers is like the best childhood I can imagine yeah. for myself. Right. You know? So I didn't hold back with vocabulary. I didn't hold back with anything. It was just yeah. imagine it the best I can imagine, put yeah. it down. Yeah. yeah. But what an incredible girl. And so, yeah. you know, I've always wondered, and I probably asked you this. How much of Ida B. Applewood is Catherine Hannigan? I, if I could be her, if I could have been her, I would have been her. Right. So I want to say two things. I think me now yeah. is her then uh -huh. in many See, ways, but I'm not me as a child. Right. I was very timid and shy and all these things. But I think also, too, it's, it's you know, your your connection with nature and loving trees and all those types of things too. I, so I would only tell you this, I, and now it's going to go on TV, but I talk to trees. There's a tree still, there's, I walk with the cats at night, but we walk, the cats walk with me, like dogs, but not on a leash. Yeah. And the old one, one's 16 and one's 10. So we go across the street and we go around the school and we go around the back of the school. There, it's not a maple, but there's this tree and it's got arms. Like, it's like a grandma just saying, come on home and give me a hug. Yeah. I'm only telling you this, Becky, but now it's <laughs> going to everybody. I got to give it a hug. I oh, go yeah. over it. Like, I am so, the most significant and important things for me in my life that have changed me have probably come from nature. Yeah. I am so grateful to nature all the right. time. And so that's why I think that's this, what came through. Probably well, and this book is that too. And, you know, my, my oldest daughter, who's environmentalist, is so into the richer love books. And I see your books as that solution to get kids outside. You know, that vitamin N, there's a deficiency in vitamin N that's right. among our kids. And your books are all about getting outside touching, feeling, yeah. and, and doing yeah. outside. Yeah. And, and that's what I think Ida B was all about because I love the way she talked to the tree, yeah. but the kind of girl she was. Yeah. So Ida B changed your life. Ida B changed my life yeah. in two ways. So Ida B changed my life when I was writing it because it really made me happy. Right. And I had never committed to something um, that thoroughly before, and I only wanted it I wanted it to be better and better and better just because I loved it so much. Not, you know, to get a contract yeah. or whatever. You right. know, not to edit right. it as a job. Yeah. And then it changed my life because I had never seen myself as an author. I had never, ever, 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 ever. And then I was. Yeah. And then I was speaking to kids, but in a very different way than I had right. done before and presenting all that. But see, stuff. that's what made you so unique and so special because of what you brought to that. And that, that's different than a lot of authors that I talked to. That I didn't want to be necessarily. Or, right, or, because or, that was not your intention writing no, this story. No. You know? And no. that's why it was that much more. No. Yeah. It really resonated. I'll tell you, and be more honest, because I can't help it with you. <laughs> and then after Ida B, it was never that experience again. And that's been a challenge for me. Yeah. How to come back to that place again of complete genuineness, you know? Yeah to not be aware of this as a product or as yeah, a sell, right. you know, that yeah. has been a challenge. And it's only now true, I feel like I got back to that again, you know, yeah. like this is what's important. Well, I think this book, you totally have gotten back to that. Well, this, so this one, thank yeah. you. No, but it's it a is, it's, well, no, but it's the joy of, of doing, being outside, being with your favorite dog, your pet, you know, but, but messing around, but it's also, how can I take two things to equal something else? Yeah. And the, the it's em limitless, those yeah. answers, that what something can equal if you put you things such together. such enthusiasm. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> well, really it, doesn't you know, do this. You're, doesn't con do that. you're contagious. So, so I wanted this book. This book is so great because um, it makes me think about something plus something equals something really cool. Right. And it, I think for kids and young kids who read this book, they can do their own. They can do what, something plus something equals something fantastic. That's right. And to build their own, you know, equations. And that's why this book has so it has joy, it has enjoyment, it has it has math, and it has a little science thrown in there. Yeah. I mean, it's it's such a great and imagination. combination. And imagination, what you a can do thing. by yep. combining things. So I want to know, where, where did the little seeds start to grow? So I have two nieces. Her, right. When I started this, maybe they were th four and six. Yeah. Now they're nine and 11. <laughs> but it, I went to visit them there in New York. 
and they love to pretend, but their pretend is very different than my pretend when I was little because they have a lot of stuff. Yeah. And we didn't have stuff. We didn't have money. You know, we we just had basic props. My mom would drive around. If people put a refrigerator box out, we would bring it home. We would cut it, and that would be a house. You yeah. know, we would put a blanket over a table, and that's your yeah. fort. A yeah. stick is a sword. Yeah. You know, not... And so I came back from visiting them, and I thought, I missed that way of pretending. Yeah. I have a degree in elementary education and math. I love math. Their dad, so I love math, but I remember growing up, and he very early thought that he was a failure at math. I remember him crying at the kitchen table, like unable to do his math mm-hmm. homework. And I, so another part of me wanted to bring in, like, yeah. how can we make math fun? How can we get back to that imagination stuff? where you're just outside in your yard. You don't need all this stuff to have a great time. Stick a dog in there because they're all in the (laughs) good time. But what a (laughs) sidekick. (laughs) She's got such a sidekick in this dog. And that's where it came from. And I sat, after a visit, honest to goodness, I sat out on my back patio next to the garage and I just started writing down these equations. Dirt plus water. First one on the page is dirt plus water oh, equals mud. mud. And then I saw it like a movie. All the places she was going to go after she's muddy, she was going to go in a bale of hay. And they were going to look like monsters and they were going to scare each other. And like uh, just this oh, movie shit. of them yeah. going around the yard and right. back again and yeah. then started doing the drawings. Yeah. So I want to know, you know, it's sort of like the chicken and the egg. Yeah. What comes first, words or pictures? So. I would say for this book, you know, I wrote the words first, but I was seeing the pictures in my mind like a movie. And it's hard to say. And even as the story, I don't know how people who one person writes and one person illustrates, I can't imagine how, because everything changes. If I change a couple of words, then the pictures change and the pictures change the words. You know, you find out things from doing the pictures. So I would say I wrote the words first, but I saw I was writing down basically what I was was seeing in my head. Yeah, Yeah, so I don't know what comes first. You know, this is the third book you've illustrated that you've done. Yes. And you change your your style from one to another. I love that. I change everything all the time, Becky. (laughs) I don't know why. Why can't I just do the same thing over (laughs) and over and get good at it? What I'm working on now is a whole other thing completely yeah, different but that again. Keeps that, but see, that keeps you engaged. As it well must. As well. yeah. It must. You have to change it up. But when you I was writing this, after I got the idea for this, so true was before this. True would take me four years. Like, uh, it was hard. It was wonderful, but hard. Yeah. I got the idea for this. I started writing down. I saw the whole images. I had never done a picture book before. I didn't even know there was a format for a picture book. <laughs> I call up my sister law after I get the idea, and I say, I've got an idea for a picture book. That's what I'm going to do next. And I said, Carrie, I'll be done in six months, a year at the outside. It was like three years. <laughs> because I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I'd never yeah. done it before. Yeah. 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 So there's a cost to that. You know, yeah. I got to live simply. I got to not have a lot of bills because you never know. I never know when it's going to be done. Yeah. Yeah. But this one is so great. And I love the Thanks. fact for, for for younger kids thinking about math and thinking of an equation, um, it, this will make regular math so much more fun if you I can hope think so. of it that way. I hope so. Yeah. I was thinking, I was doing this um, planning for these educator events mm-hmm. related right. to this, and I was thinking of ways that you can have equations in other fields and other areas too besides math. Right. And I think one of the great places to have an equation, well, equations are really... They're not numbers or whatever. They're if-then statements. If you do this, if you have three apples and then you have two more apples, then you have, it's like cause and effect. So you can use it for goal setting. You say, if you want a puppy, what are the three or four things you have to add up to get your puppy? And it makes it so much better, you know? But it's also good for, like, discipline and stuff. Like, if you... Uh, go out, and if you don't call us, if you don't come home from before your curfew, and you don't call us, then you, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. you can put it in pictures, like on the but refrigerator. You know what? That works. That you know what? That works for all of us, no matter That's what right. age you are. You know? Yeah. You know. Yes. So yeah. They make it. things simpler. Well, yeah. But to think about it in, a, in an easy equation that you know to get to here. Yes. These are the elements that I need. Yes. And Not all the talking. Have, well, and, and stuff, sometimes you know? that I have to work for those that's elements right. to get to that goal. That's right. And I think that's a real, you know, it's not that instant gratification. No. You know, you have to work no. at things this to plus, get plus, plus, to plus. that equals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, 
this whole thing with imagination, and, and this was so great because I think kids, kids could even do role playing with this book. You know, you could do so much with this. And, um, but imagination is so essential to, to kids. And I think sometimes we're, we're missing out because we're so digitally tied in with that, where somebody else is doing imagination for you. Yep. Yep. So, and, and knowing that physical books and the physical act of doing something, whether it's being outside or whether it's creating something with your hands, right. is so much more important because those tactile things are so much more important than looking at a screen. Right. And that comes to reading too, feeling the book and reading the book. I agree. So, but imagination, I mean, you've always been so great with that. So, I yeah. think it saved me when I was, yeah. when I was growing right. up, you know? Sure. It wasn't like an escape, but. I, I think there's something so fun about somebody providing images for you, especially the digital stuff. They're so fast and bright, but like the greatest thing you can do is create something yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the greatest satisfaction. That's exciting, having somebody else do it for you, but right. the greatest satisfaction is if you make it for yourself. Right. You know, you imagine it yourself. Right, right. Yeah. And I, and I think that's so much stuff you can get from a book. And, and there was a new study just out from Harvard saying that reading really is that one thing that can relax you, that lowers your blood pressure. It does all that, but it takes you away. And we all need that, you know? We do. Yeah. Okay. So when you were saying about books and how important they are, I want to go back to Anderson's. Do you remember some years ago you won... Anderson's was like the best bookstore in the United States. Yeah. It was basically, yeah. Yeah. and they asked us for oh, that's right. little movies. Oh, that's right. Of congratulations or whatever. Yeah. And I said to you via video that when I was our library in my hometown used to have a plaque in stone engraved over the door, and it said, "Books are like an open door to set the spirit free." What you were saying about that Harvard study, right? Right. And I said, so you are now the best seller of Open Doors to Set the Spirit Free, which is exactly what they're saying in That's right. that Harvard yeah. study. Oh, that's, yeah. So, All right. show us a couple examples of how, how you work okay. your art and, and the transformations it goes through and how you, how you start, just to start with the words. You okay. know? And that sort of so thing. I often have ideas and they don't work out. I'm completely wrong. They seem like wonderful ideas. But this, so this was the beginning when I sat out on my patio and wrote the first notes for Dirt Plus Water Equals Mud. And I don't know if you can see it because it's all in pencil. Yeah. But it has the difference equations and it says dirt plus water equals mud. I was seeing the story in my head like a movie and then almost saying, well, the, this would be a still from the movie. This would be a still from the movie. This would be, and then describing what they're doing, but in terms of equations. So it says dirt plus water equals mud mud plus mulch. I was going to have to dive into mulch. Oh. And they're covered and it equals monsters. <laughs> monster plus monster equals, I don't know, monstrous afraid. I couldn't figure it out. And then there's other notes and and then anyway, they're not good at first, but they're just ideas. Right, sure. And these were the first painted drawings or painted sketches for what I thought the kid yeah. and the dog would look like. And my idea was at first to have a kid that you couldn't tell if it was a boy or a girl. Right. It would be basically genderless. I did 80 drawings with this kid. I was cleaning him up and I thought, this kid bores me so much. Like, I can't stand any more time with this kid. <laughs> and if I feel this way, like anybody reading yeah, it is going to sure. feel the same way. What kind of kid would I want to spend time with? I thought of the nieces, tutus, jeans, cowboy boots, everything. And then started drawing this different sure. character, yeah. redid the whole thing. Yeah. Anyway, so these are experiments then trying out stuff with watercolor. These yeah. are early yeah. paintings yeah. with a, uh, that character drawn and just oh, trying out so different great. colors. Yeah. I know, I almost should have stayed with it. No, 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 no. I mean, what's in the book is absolutely fabulous, but this is so cool to see but it's sort so of the, fresh. You know, the journey to, to the final illustrations. And then I decided to draw them digitally. So I went back and this is, the, this is that character in the dog drawn digitally, mm -hmm. printed on watercolor, painted with watercolor, then I scan it back into the computer. So the characters are painted with watercolor. I scan it back into the computer and then paint everything else digitally. Wow, that is so cool, that process. It's like the worst process anybody could pick well, for themselves. I know it, but I know it's lengthy, but, it but it's so interesting to it see. It made that. me happy. Yeah. It yeah. made me happy, yeah. and I felt more confident about that than, than, right. than the watercolor. Yeah. So that's the process. Yeah. And as I've saying to you before, you know, 
a word changes and then the drawings change. A drawing changes sure. and then the word yeah. changes and it keeps going back and forth and back and yeah. forth yeah. all the way through. Well, I think, I think this is such a great way to show kids how, you know, not only when you revise words when you write something, you revise the pictures. Over like and over again. Yeah. yeah, which is a great, uh, yeah. you know. Not an easy I think thing. part of the reason I never thought growing up like I would be an artist or I would be a author is you know, when you're in school teachers show you excellent examples of work mm -hmm. they show you finished work but I never saw a process I never saw how those things yeah, began right. I didn't see that people would just write notes on a piece of paper at first because they don't have the sentences they just have ideas which is what I do and then it would evolve over time yeah, and yeah. I thought when I was a kid well words don't come out of me like that you know my drawings are never great right away so I must yeah. not be meant to do something like that yeah. or it just yeah. you know it has to evolve into yeah. what you think is yeah. going to work yeah so yeah. I hope now I show kids like oh it, it can start out really <laughs> <laughs> and then if you stay with it, it gets good. No, but good. see, that's such an important thing to show. I think you know? so. You know? I think so. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not like, you know, you write something and boom, there it is. No. That's not the way it works. No, not, the way not for works. me yeah. anyway. Yeah. So I know 15, 16 years ago you moved from, was it from New York yep. to, to? To Iowa. To Iowa. Yeah. And, and that changed everything. Yeah, it changed everything. So yeah. how, how has that been? How is your life now? And, and Oh, I still, I'm so grateful for that move. I'm yeah. so grateful for that move. And I still love that place. You know, it's still hills and woods and river and... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I do sometimes think, are there other places though? Is there out west? Is there... Yeah. Or is it just travel? I've gotten so many stories from that place and the animals I've met. Yeah. And, I mean, that changed my life, truly. It right. changed my life so much. Not just for the book, but about nature and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was a great step. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I told you every book is a different thing. I don't know how many times I have not. I've done so many different jobs, so who knows where I'll end up. Yeah, but, but you know, the thing is I always look at when I talk to any author, and it's all those experiences that make that fodder, that, that, that you know, that foundation <clears throat> for what right. you write about. And all these, you know, different educational experiences you've had and teaching. And I know you, you know, you headed up a Head Start program and all those things you've done, um, they all go into this. They did. And they and, did. And, and we're essential did. to it. That's like right. Like that I knew preschool kids. Yeah. 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 And, and at right. the time I thought, I'm working at a preschool. Yeah. How did that happen? I have yeah. a degree in secondary mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, that's but what it, it leads important. to. Yes. Yeah. But it leads to these great that's equations right. that show what your imagination can do. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a blast. It's fun. But you're learning at the same time. Because, but you don't even know that. That age, so. You make me sound You're so very good stealthy. Together. Can I say that? <laughs> Sneaking the fun in whenever I <laughs> Right, can. right. Mm. So, um, you know, when you think about a book like this, what do you, what do you hope kids will take away from it? Or even, even if, if I'm a parent or I'm a teacher and I'm reading this to a child, you know, mm -hmm. I know I'm thinking about what kind of equations I need to do in my life. But what, what do you hope, you know, kids will take For away? For kids, I would hope they would say, Oh my gosh, I didn't think about that I could just go out in my yard and have all that kind of fun. Right. Like right. that that with just this with just a stick <laughs> and a hose or whatever. Right. That right. I could have so much fun. You know, I hope that they would say, Let's go outside. Let's right. go let's go have That's some right. fun. For teachers, I always hope that, you know, they would learn a way to teach better mm -hmm. but also to have some fun while they're doing it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So when you do do school events, and I know you've done them with, with, well, of course, a variety of ages because, you know, Ida B, and those are, those are middle grade novels, right. you know, for that fourth to sixth, whatever. But then you have picture books. So, so what do you do when you're talking to different groups of kids in a, in a school environment or, or when you're doing a, like what you're going to do for us today is talk to teachers. Right. So tell us, tell us the difference of what you, what you so do. So for the younger kids, so what I really focus on for everybody as I said to you, is I want people to know it's a process. 
I want people to know the things that I didn't know. Yeah. Like it, it can start out terrible and it's all these steps to getting to wonderful right. if you stay with it. Yeah. With the little kids, I tend to focus on the picture books because you can see the development so easily in images. And with the older kids, I can talk more about language and writing. I tell everything in the context of a story, like even the small points I work in a story because I think that's how we hold on right. to information. And then I always end with a story about an animal, <laughs> some experience. You are you know, a born storyteller. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. And then for today with the educators, I will focus on, today I'll focus on how important process is, as, at least as important as product. Yeah. Yeah. And then for this book, I'll talk, if they're interested, I'll talk about 10 ways to integrate equations, right. you know, across, a, across the, the curriculum. curriculum. Yeah. 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 And, and this, to me, this story. is such a great introduction to, yeah. you know, there's such a focus on, on Common Core and all this kind of stuff, but when you can take something like this and integrate it and make learning such fun, you don't even know you're learning at the same time. And I think, you know, trying to concentrate on certain concepts so much instead of using other mediums right. is so important. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice to hear. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I want to know what you're working on now. What's next? So I have several things going on. Okay. I don't know what will come to fruition. Okay. One is um, a graphic novel. Oh, cool. For a little, like a chapter book graphic novel. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. And then um, I'm interested in writing down some of the stories that I've told. Mm -hmm. Telling stories and writing them are different, you know. Right, uh, sure, um, sure. And so figuring out a way to do that, about a lot, they would be about nature and yeah. about animals. And I think we need it. Like, I think we need to remember our connection yeah. to all those. Anyway. Yeah. And then I have a folder full of ideas. I have a, there is a middle grade novel about um, a girl and her father who love astronomy, who love oh, yeah. stars, and um, she's a geek. You know, it's a geek novel, but, yeah. you know, I don't, well, I, I'm a geek, really. I mean, there's a map in that book with a key, <laughs> and it made me so happy. No, that's great. A that's map great. with a key. Kids love that kind of stuff, though. And it, yeah. Yeah. See? So there's that, too. And you know, I, there's something I was going to ask you, and I don't know if you've ever thought of this, but, you know, when I think of Ida B. Applewood, and I think of her... Of, of that. Have you ever thought of doing maybe a, a beginning reader or something or a picture book about Ida B? Wow. I had never thought of it. You know, people ask me if I want to write like a sequel and I would have said no because, no. you know, the mom is sick and no. I just want I don't to leave want a it. Sequel. But I never thought of something like this and but something, that it could be her about, but just about, about her, nature. Yeah, about and, her. Yeah. Okay, so think about that. Oh my gosh, that's an amazing idea. <laughs> yeah. That's a great idea. Okay. Catherine, thank you so much. It's so great to see you. And you too. Come back sooner than from the last time. But thank you. We always love seeing you. Congratulations on dirt plus water equals mud equals great reading and fun. Thank you so much for having me. Great conversation with Catherine Hannigan. We all know her as the author of the middle grade novel, Ida B., one of my absolute favorites of all time. This is her new picture book that she's illustrated and written. It's called Dirt Plus Water equals mud, a great book to introduce kids to math and imagination. Thanks for joining me on Authors Revealed.